he came from the four corners of the earth. The mightiest gladiators from Great Britain, Australia, the USA, Germany, South Africa, and Russia. Together, they united to accept the challenge of the international champion contenders in a battle that will decide who is the best in the world. reconvene for International Gladiators 2. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Gattamley. Glad you could join us as gladiators from around the globe join forces to take on the world's very best contenders. You know, last year over 50 million people watched International Gladiators worldwide and this year promises to be bigger and better than ever. I know you agree, Ulrika. Absolutely, Mike. This year we have more countries than ever. A total of six nations will be represented. The United States of America, Australia, South Africa, Russia, Germany, and good old Great Britain. So we should see some battle. Now, as well as national pride, of course, our champions will receive a fabulous round-the-world trip for two. But we haven't forgotten about our runners-up. They'll each walk away with £2,000. Well, that kind of money I would like to compete. The other member of our announced team, a wonder from down under. She is the Australian Gladiator presenter. Please welcome Kimberly Joseph. <laughs> hour plane flight. It's great to have you here in Birmingham. Well, it's certainly great to be here in Birmingham. There's a, a fantastic atmosphere in this audience tonight. As I understand it, Gladiators is immensely popular in Australia. How big is the phenomena and how many people watch? Well, we're actually still in our first year of filming, so uh, we've been amazed by the success of Gladiators. It's uh, fast becoming one of the top rating programs around the country, so we're very proud of it. Well, it's great to have you here, and we will see you definitely later in the day. Fantastic. I look forward to it. Kimberly Joseph. So now it's time to meet our international contenders. Tonight they are from Germany, Miriam Lusch, and from the United States, Peggy Odita. <laughs> Welcome, Miriam. Tell us, what do you do and where do you come from? I come from Germany, from Munich, and my profession is a teacher for elementary children. Right. Now, you've had a look at the games and you've had a play on some of the events here. Do you have a favorite event? I like the wall uh, very much because I do like to climb. Oh, well, you know you're going to have the gladiators behind you. How do you think you're going to do tonight? I will give my best and I will see what will happen. Well, we look forward to watching you play the games and taking part. Miriam Loesch! Peggy Odita has many great athletic moments during her lifetime, the American Gladiator Contender Champion, but she is going to compete for the USA, or at least try to, in the heptathlon in next year's Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia. So you're going to the trials, and I would imagine that performing in front of all these people here in Birmingham has got to be great preparation. Oh, definitely. The crowd here is so great. You guys help us so much by cheering in and giving your support. It's really wonderful. Nervous at all? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. am. I'm just going to wait, get the first event under my belt, and go on from there. Okay, Peggy. Good luck. Nice to have you here. Peggy Odita from the USA. So we've met our contenders. Now let's meet the gladiators they'll be facing. From the United Kingdom, Jet and Zodiac. From South Africa, Sahara and New Island. From Russia. 
Asher, Astra and Lynx. From Australia, Fury and Flame. From Germany, Angel. And from the United States of America, Jazz. You've met the women now. Let's meet tonight's male contenders. They are from Great Britain, Mark Everett. And from Russia, Alexander Maltsev. familiar face. Mark, tell everybody what you do and where you're from. Hi, I'm from Boston, Lincolnshire, and I work at a factory. I'm a machine operator. Now, you're our current UK champion. I bet you thought your pain was over when you'd finished British Gladiators. Yeah, we had a good competition in the Nationals, but I'm back here, and it's a great honour to be representing Britain. In the and what do, you, what do you think about the competition? I mean, this is entirely different. International Gladiators, international contenders. They look a lot fitter and a lot bigger than the national contenders, but I'm going to do my best. We we'll look forward to keeping an eye on you. Mark Everett, ladies and gentlemen. Alexander Moltsev from Russia is a great athlete. Your hometown and your occupation. Uh, hello, my name is Alexander. Yes, I'm I from Russia. I work as a bodyguard. What is your favorite event and why? I like all the sporting events. All of them. You're good at all of them. Why do you think you'll succeed against the gladiators? I'll try to do my best for the audience and myself. Hey, hey best of luck. Put a smile on your face. This guy's got the game face on. He is ready to go. Alexander Molsev from Russia. The male gladiators they'll be facing tonight. From the United States of America, Hawk and Sabre. From South Africa, MP and Samson. From Australia, Vulcan and Hammer. From Germany, Giant and Flash. From Russia, Dynamite. And from the United Kingdom, Rhino. Let the games begin. Our female contenders are set to go. Using the blue scoring markers, Miriam Loesch from Germany. And trying to score with the red markers, American Gladiator champion from the USA, Peggy Odita. Sworn to protect the Powerball turf, let's meet our three gladiators. From South Africa, Sahara. Astro from Russia and Flame from Australia. Over to international referee, John Anderson. Germany and USA, ready! Powered up Three, for Powerball. Two, one. Here's Peggy. Oh, kept out by Astra. Miriam tackled by Sahara. The American girl reloads, spots the space, and easy two points for Peggy. Peggy again tries to split them. Oh, too hot to play. Three points. And Miriam yet to score. Peggy. Oh, bounding her way through. Two more. Miriam tackled by Sahara. Peggy reloads. Oh, singed by the flame this time. And Astra, oh, Miriam with a free run for two. The German girl gets her marks on the scoreboard. Peggy. Oh, flames put out. Two more. And Miriam kicks sand in Sahara's face. Another two. Gladiator's not quite together as a team yet. Peggy taking more. And Miriam beats Astra to the basket to score. Time running down. And so is Miriam. Peggy reloads. Oh, a face full of flame. Miriam against Sahara. Oh, rattles the rim. Unlucky. And what a fantastic start to this international competition. Peggy pulling 11 points. Look how she faced up to two gladiators, split them, and despite that tackle, smothered the flame for a centre basket. After one event, Peggy from the USA 11, Miriam from Germany. The men are set to play Powerball using the blue scoring markers from Great Britain, 1995 British champion Mark Everett. Using the red 
scoring markers from Russia, Alexander Maltsev. Ready to do battle are three gladiators. Hawk from the USA, Flash from Germany, and the Hammer from Australia. Flash might find Russian bodyguard Alexander Moltsev rather tough to get his teeth into, 5'11 and weighing 15 stones. The UK's Mark Everett is three inches taller but a stone lighter. Get this show on the road. Alexander. Oh, Flash takes him out. Mark, nailed by the hammer. This is going to be a tough one. Alexander. Oh, Hawks roots to conquer. Mark beats Flash. Hammer's there. Rushes Alexander, needs to pot some reds. Oh, a flash of brilliance. Mark reloads. All battling it out, hammer and tongs against the baskets. Alexander with space, two points, despite his size, incredible speed. Mark back to try again. Oh, Hulk flies it in, Mark free. Switches for a superb center basket. Alexander, oh, much better from Hulk. Mark flashes there, and hammer makes it a real horror. Alexander, straight into flash, and Hulk sinks his talons in. Mark again. Hammer pushes him wide, but he scored! Alexander, all oh, the Hulk disposes of his prey, big takedown. Mark, two gladiators against him, but so's the clock. Well, we said it would be tough, but good scoring. Mark's family celebrates, Mike Adam leaves there. Well, Mark Everett, I don't know what it was like for you when you were defending or winning the British Championship, but compare your experience then and your experience now against the international team of gladiators. It was hard for the Nationals, but I just feel like I've been run over now. <laughs> best, best move of the whole Powerball match. You were smart enough to realize that, hey, you were wide open and you had a chance to go for the center cylinder, and you took three as opposed to two. That's right. In this game, you need as many points as you can get, so I see the opportunity, so I went for it. Well, congratulations, Mark. You won it 5-2. Mark Everett from Great Britain. <laughs> Alexander, what did you think of your performance? So Everything was okay, <laughs> but I've been too soft with my opponents. You were a tough guy out there. You hung in there. Good luck. Keep going. Thank you. Alexander Maltsev from Russia. Too soft with his opponents, eh? Kimberly's down there with the gladiators. You look like you were ready for anything then. That was a tough game. No, it was a tough game. I was ready to rumble, but the guy was very fast. We made his life very hard. But you know, it's, it's one of the fastest games. I love it. And the floor, you know, you have to get on this floor. It's heavy to, to move, but we, we, we tried our best. Well, you certainly look like uh, you're a bit worse for wear now. You're you puffing give, and panting. You have to give everything, everything in the, in the moment that the play, the play begins. And that they did. Hammer, you were living up to your name. You enjoy this game very much, and I think it's one of your favourites, isn't it? Well, I've been playing rugby league for 26 years, and it's, to play on a game like this where it's a minute and it's full explosive for the minute, you certainly do tire quick. But, it, you know, the challenge was fantastic. And they scored some good points, but it was a good game. That's what we liked. Oh, it was very clean, wasn't it? Very clean, but, I mean, that's the way we want to play it. The harder and cleaner, the better. Now, Hawk, you are in the zone, man. Kim, let me tell you something. I'm instilling new nicknames today. That's showtime. He's crunch time, and I'm lunch time. And we gave you some head splitting in prime time. Let's get it going, baby. Woo! Look, a legend in his own lunch time. After one event, Alexander from Russia is on two. Mark from the UK, five. Standing at the foot of the wall, it's Miriam from Germany. She's going to be chased by Jet from the UK. Also getting ready to climb, it's Peggy from the US. She's going to be chased by Fury from Australia. And now it's over to our international referee, John Forsyth. Germany and USA, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second. Three, two, So John one. Forsyth gets the climb underway. 
Oh, but Peggy having all sorts of trouble at the foot of the wall. Miriam slow as well. They're making it too easy for the Gladiators. Here they come. And Jet is just a stretch to fetch Miriam. Fury's after Peggy. And Miriam clinging to the wall. The German more used to walls coming down. Jet finding for a better grip. Oh, and sticks her. And Peggy looks to have taken the toughest route up the monstrous chimney overhang. Fury almost level with her, and she's got to make a move soon because Peggy's at the top. Come on, Fury! She's got a grip. Can she contain her? Oh, she's slipped her! Peggy's at the top, and that's ten points the hard way. On the left, last year's international men's champion, Wesley Berry, clearly delighted. Peggy, truly exciting stuff. It was very, very close all the way. Despite that seven-second head start you got, Fury was there every inch of the way. I stumbled a bit in the beginning, but I managed to regain myself, and she was right next to me. We were side by side the entire time, but I managed to get up. Peggy, the bottom line, 10 very important Woo! points. Congratulations, Peggy Odita of the USA. Well, what can I say except for Fury must be furious. Uh, you can say that again. Look. Uh, she did very well. It was messy on both our behalves. She won fair and square. Congratulations. Not a happy girl. And Miriam, this was your favorite event. Yes, but I, but I did this wall only twice. And so I think it was a little bit too slow. And also, you have a very, very fast one of our champion climbers behind you, Jet. <laughs> <Very Yeah. fun. laughs> the thing is, with this, this wall, I've been doing it four years now, so I'm very familiar with the roots on the wall. And it, it is difficult to get used to a new route. You did very well there. Thank, Thank you. you. Certainly a good attempt. Let's hear it for Miriam from Germany and for our two gladiators, Jet and Fury. So after only two events, the American girl has a massive 21 points while the Germans clocked up six. So now we move into the men's wall with Mark from the UK. He's going to be chased by Samson from South Africa. Also getting ready to climb, it's Alexander from Russia. And he's going to be chased by Giant from Germany. And looking at the German Giant, he towers a massive 6'3 in height but weighs over 14 stones. Samson from South Africa had his hair cut, but there's still an awful lot of strength left in that 6 foot 16 stone body. Russia and UK, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second. Three, two, one. So it's Mark from the UK in blue, Alexander from Russia in red. Both guys climbing strongly. And here comes trouble. Samson on Mark and Giant on Alexander. And they'll be hard pushed to catch these two contenders. First to the top gets ten, second scores five. Alexander finding his feet. Here comes Mark. He's going to snatch the ten. No, oh, he's off! Mark's off the wall, a terrible unforced error just as the points were in the bag. Now it's all about the Russian. Is Alexander good enough? Giant could do with a beanstalk to help him up. Alexander struggling at the top. Giant got him. Oh, Giant's lost him. Incredible drama on the wall. Alexander's got plenty of time to pocket some points here. Go on, my son. Let me call. He's there. Alexander Moltsev scores 10 points. Does Vidania. And he's made a lot of friends already. Big, big, strong upper body, good shoulders. How did you do it? Maybe I've had a bit of luck. Sir. That's all. So. Thank you. Thank you all Merci for your encouragement. Everybody. Thank you as well. Alexander Moltsev, 10 points in the wall. Great performance. Alexander, modest in victory. He knows that his opponent, Mark Everett, should have snatched the 10. Mark was at the top, way ahead of Samson, but just lost his concentration and his grip. That error could cost Mark dear. After two events, the Russian storms into the lead on 12, while the UK's contender languishes on 5. So, still to come, Pendulum, Hang Tough and Gauntlet. Join us after the break here on International Gladiators. International show. Here is event number three. And first up on the pendulum, it's Peggy from the US. And she's going to be facing Sahara from South Africa. Over to John. 
Peggy, a hept athlete from America, stands 5'10 and weighs over 11 stones. Chasing her on the pendulum, the South African stunner, Sahara, stands 4 inches taller but 6 pounds lighter. by now five points for evading capture for 40 seconds 10 points for lasting the full minute the american contender looking for the sahara in fact we're all looking for the sahara we know she's hot on this event here she comes from the right peggy moves left not often you see a sahara at the north pole but she's closing peggy down peggy up against sahara and the sands of time still a long way short of the five points peggy climbing two Sahara bogged down up there, moving better now. Pendulum almost as hypnotizing as that gladiator. But Peggy has pulled her five, looking more confident now. Sahara will be hard-pressed to flag her down in this event. Peggy knows she's got to keep a grip on the situation and the pendulum for the maximum. Well, the Sahara's covered most of the globe here, but maybe she'd have been faster on a camel. Time up. And Peggy's pal's happy. Oops, sorry, son. In the replay, Sahara always had Peggy in her sights, but never within reach. Next up, it's Miriam from Germany. And she's going to be facing Zodiac from the UK. Over to John Anderson. Well, the German contender has heard that Zodiac is unrivaled in this kind of global domination, so she's got to move fast. Oh, but she's not fast enough. Zodiac flies around the globe at supersonic speed. Miriam desperately drops south, but Zodiac zeroing in. She'll be looking to grab that yellow flag. Miriam maneuvering, making herself an awkward target, but Zodiac has got her. Oh, and Miriam drops out. Good, impressive pendulum from our blonde Brit. In the replay, you can see how difficult it is to snatch the flag when you're above the contender, but Zodiac's a queen on the ball. After three events, Peggy extends an already huge lead, 31-6. to six. So we now move into the men's event with Mark from the UK. He's going to be facing Hammer from Australia. Over to our referee, Larry Thompson. Well, let's get a handle on the Hammer. The awesome Aussie stands 6'2 and weighs in at a hefty 15 stone plus. One of the few Australian performers who hasn't appeared in a soap opera. Sets out to nail the contender. Mark Everett will need all his skill and speed to escape this hitman. Oh! Oh, Shane, Mark's training partner, with plenty to say. And Hammer really is relentless. He's certainly giving Mark no respite. Mark moving around the equator, but always the Hammer is poised precariously over his head. Hammer makes his move. Oh, the Hammer smashes down, misses his target, and Mark can't believe his good fortune. Ten points. That was easy. The family celebrate his stroke of luck, makes up for his mess up on the wall. But this hammer is already forging himself a great gladiator career. Well, hammer, come back here. I was going to say how excellent you were going to be and throwing yourself at it, hammer and tongs, and then you fell off, you fool. I don't do anything by halves. If I'm going to get him, I've got to get him fast, and because he's quick, he's a superb athlete. And he's certainly going to do well in this series. Look at him. He's built the speed. I certainly had to do the best I could. Well, you did. It wasn't good enough. And you picked up 10 points, Mark. Yeah, it went easy. It's a fresh guy. My God. He just threw himself at you. I know. I'm glad he fell, because if he'd have caught me, he'd have pulled me off as well. He certainly would have done. Let's hear it for Hammer and for Mark. Next up is Alexander from Russia. 
he's going to be facing Samson from South Africa. Over to Larry Thompson. Set the pendulum. sets off. In this event, it's a question of looking for trouble, and when you see it coming over the horizon, run like mad. Russian champion Alexandra has made a lot of friends here already, and there's one. Oh, she's getting excited, and here's why. Samson's never on his man. Oh, he's got him. No, he's lost it. A hair-raising experience for Samson. And although for Alexander there wasn't much rushing around, he pulled the points, and all his supporters celebrate. It's a tough maneuver, making your assault from above, and Samson, like Hammer, needs a little more practice. After three events, Alexander swings up to 22 and Mark to 15. Next. The stage is set for event number four. Who will reign supreme on the rings? For the contenders on the platform from Germany, Miriam Loesch. She withstand the Australian Fury. The furious foe fired up after losing out on the wall to Peggy. Looking at the stats, our shapely Aussie shell lookalike stands 5'7 and weighs in at just over nine stones. Compare that to Miriam, our fabulous Frau, and delightful Delera, and you'll see she's an inch taller but two pounds lighter. Swings out and oh my goodness, Miriam's gone! The German contender slips. What a tragic mistake so early in this event. The German contingent are stunned by that and Fury claiming the credit for some reason. Mike's there. Miriam, I know this is the last place you want to be right now, being interviewed, but what happened up there? I slipped off of the rings and I, I don't know why it happened. The important thing is there are two more events to go. Keep your chin up and keep fighting, all right? Miriam Loesch from Germany. Fury, not much of a battle, but then again, it, it is very difficult for contenders to go against gladiators who have experience in this event. Yes, it is. That's very true. Um, I didn't think I was that scary. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, it is a difficult game. Um, and if you haven't been up there before, I, I well imagine that it was pretty scary for her. That's the break. Well, you'll get another chance. Nice work up there, even though you didn't break a sweat. Thank you very much. The lovely Fury. Well, a great shame for Miriam, who could have done with the points from that event. Next up for the contenders from the USA, Peggy Odita. And she squares off against Jet. Jet, a firm favorite from the UK. Looking at her facts and figure, the flag-flying Jet stands two inches shorter than Peggy and nearly two stones lighter. Let's see if Jet's got the power. Over to international referee John Anderson. Contender ready! Anita! Jet clearly aware that she's got a work cut out against Peggy. Oh, and Peggy in the scoring zone already. And Jet working out her strategy. Jet traversing. She's going to trap Peggy on the swing. Here she comes. Oh, gotcha. No. Peggy slipped the scissors. Peggy regrouping. Now she's flying in the face of Jet. And Jet's one rings. Peggy going for the platform, can't control it. Jet marking her well. Oh, she's gone! Peggy lets the ring and the point slip through her fingers, and she is furious with herself. What a letdown for Peggy. Her supporters are miserable, although some are hiding their misery well. In the replay, Peggy gets desperately close to Jet's platform, swings back for another crack, misses a ring, and plunges out of the points. After four events, Peggy remains on 31, Miriam stays on six, it's back to Mike Adamley. The men are set to hang tough. First up for the contenders from Great Britain, Mark Everett. 
but he's got a tall order as he goes against Germany's Giants. The crowd making the giant feel at home. This German is so tall, his head's always in the clouds. We think he brought along the gladiator Zeppelin for him. Mark supporters hoping they'll have something to sing about after this. Let's send it over to international referee Larry Thompson. Great Britain ready! The giant swings out. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Well, Mark's hoping for a fairy tale finish to this event in the scoring zone already. Giant traversing superbly well for a big man. Oh, he's got him with those long legs. Locks him up, drags him down. Great performance from the big fella. Looking at it again, the UK contender swings back, but once Giant got those long legs up, the only place for Mark was down. Ready to swing for the contenders from Russia, Alexander Moltsev. He'll go against USA Gladiator Hawk. Sometimes more squawk than Hawk, you may remember from last year, always got something to say for himself, but looking at his stats, not without good reason. He stands six inches taller than Alexander and a mighty 40 pounds heavier. Referee Larry and send them on their way. Russia, ready! Gladiator, ready! Yeah, baby, half round hot, get ready to get it done. Three, two, one! Well, Hawk's so busy talking, he's almost forgot his gun shield. A veteran star of American gladiators, of course. Alexander, a bodyguard by profession. Very impressive so far. Hawk finding himself out of position. Alexander's come wide and swung right past him. Hawk traversing to recover. Oh, Alexander barging Hawk out of the way. Swinging back into trouble. Oh, barges him again. And Hawk is one ringed. Oh, taunting the Russian. Alexander's going to have to tough it out now, trying to shake the gladiator off the rings. The American Hawk grinning like a Cheshire cat. Superb strength from Alexander, but he's not taking the Hawk's full weight yet. Oh, now he is. He's got him. Hawk the Slayer. Well, in the replay, Hawk knows that once he unleashes his full weight, it'll tip the scales in his favor. After four events, neither contender advances their score. Alexander still leads at 22. Mark way behind on 15. Next. Our first female contender to run the gauntlet is Miriam from Germany. And she'll be facing our team of gladiators, Jazz. Flame. Lynx. Jet. And Delilah. And now over to our international referee, John Anderson. Germany, ready! Ready to to Gauntlet. First is Jazz. Jazz is superb, all singing, all dancing gladiator from America. And Miriam takes another run at it. Jazz saying scat for that ramrod of hers. Miriam having trouble getting going on this Gauntlet. There's 10 points if you make it under 20 seconds, but she won't be collecting those. Miriam only just over nine stones, doesn't have the bulk, and I think the German team will have to look to their female contenders in future for a little more weight, a little more muscle, and certainly a little more heart. That was a lacklustre performance from Miriam. The crowd's sympathetic and supportive. Here's Kimberly. Miriam, you didn't even get, get past Jazz. What happened? Because she's very strong, Jazz. Too strong for you? Yes, she's too strong for me at this game. Jazz, that was incredible. Unfortunately, she didn't get past you, but I guess that's the aim of the game. That's the whole object, but I think she's cutting herself short. She's an excellent contender. That's what we like. We like contenders to come and give us that 100% effort and keep coming at us. She never quit. No, it doesn't look like she's giving up, so good luck to you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank our contender, Miriam from Germany. Jazz with full credit for Miriam there. Back to Kimbo for the next intro. Our next female contender is Peggy from the USA. She'll be facing our gladiators, Angel. Delilah. Flame. Astra. And Jet. And now over to our international referee, John 
Forsyth. USA, ready! First, she's up Four. against Angel in for Jazz. Oh, and Peggy's through her. Skirts Delilah, extinguishes the flame. Astra holding the little pads, makes it the impact on Jet. Oh, can she put the brakes on? No! Peggy through, unconfirmed time, 10 seconds. Great Gorpa for the American. Kimberly's there. That was just incredible. contenders I have ever seen. You must be proud of yourself tonight. I am. I'm, I don't know what to say. <laughs> speechless. Well, um, I'm sure the gladiators are speechless after that run. They're tough. They are. I just used the sides of the gauntlet to get through and that helped me a lot. Now, Andrew, what was the time? It was 10 seconds. 10 seconds! <laughs> Woo! Fantastic. Well done. Thank you very much. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Peggy from the USA. Peggy scoring a point for every second it took her to run the gauntlet. Go, girl, go. Well, she certainly did that after five events. Peggy's a master colossal, 41 points, while Miriam's destined to stay on six. Our first male contender to run the gauntlet tonight is Mark from the UK. And he'll be facing our team of gladiators, Dynamite. Impy! Vulcan! Flash! And Sabre! And over to our international referee, Larry Thompson. Get ready! Ready is ready! Three, two, faced the gauntlet before, but not against this wrecking crew. Dynamite, giving Mark some stick. Explosive stuff from him. Next, it's MP. Oh, Mark impudent with the imp. Slams past Vulcan and past Flash. Can Sabre stop him? No, Mark cuts the Sabre down. Excellent gauntlet from Mark. Three, two, one, and the whistle goes. You feel like running the other way, but um, now I've done it. It was a good result. Well, I'm sure you're glad you didn't run the other way because Andrew, what was his time? 17 seconds. 17 seconds, 10 points! Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Mark! His fiance Frankie there with her mum, Julie. And next up to run the gauntlet is Alex from Russia. Charges the Rhino. Oh, Rhino can't hold him. Next to him. Tries to knock his block off. Certainly his helmet's gone. Into Vulcan. Alexander using every ounce of the 15 stone at his disposal. And he's up and out and over. Vulcan seems pleased with himself. Alexander may have lost his helmet, but his bandana's intact. The Russian fans are not happy. The question is, was Alexander legitimately knocked out of the gauntlet? If so, the game's over. But if it's judged he was intentionally lifted out, they can restart. Vulcan celebrates with his impish teammate. Alexander clearly claiming they should restart. Looking at it again, Alexander tries to pass against one wall, then switches to the other and runs up the side and is knocked out of the gauntlet. Well, the Russian TV producer in black there, Vincent Battaglia, protesting. Come on! There's Ken Warwick, London Weekend's Gladiator producer. He's got his finger up. That looks like trouble. More aggressive reason, but it's getting heated down there. Watch, look. There's nothing here. I don't want to try to contain somebody. The rules, the rules, right? The rules see that it's perfectly He's guiding him to that side. No, 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 no. It's perfectly legitimate to push. That's what that thing's for. He's guiding him over the side. You're not listening, Vince. It's got to be lifted. 
and he did not get well, with all the bickering going on down there amongst the referees looks like we'll have to send in for a UN peacekeeping force let's watch that replay again if you look at Alexander's feet as Ken suggested it does look as if Alexander ran up the side and was pushed rather than lifted making it a legitimate decision Kimberly's hoping for an interview but Alexander's in no mood to chat after five events Alexander fails to add to his score of 22 while Mark storms to 25 well that's the end of part two but don't go away We'll be back after the break with more excitement on International Gladiators. Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham where it's International Eliminator time. Now in the women's competition, Miriam from Germany is on six points, Peggy from the US, she's on 41 points, that's a 35-point difference, which will give Peggy a massive 17 and a half second head start. USA, you will go on my first whistle. Germany, you will go on my second whistle. Three. On Gladiators, two, they say it isn't four. over until it's over, and anything can happen to Peggy Odita from the United States during the next few seconds. This Eliminator is far more tricky than the Eliminator course she's used to back home. One mistake means that Miriam Loss from Germany is in with a chance. Smoothly up the rope, onto the hand ladder. The heptathlete from American Gladiators champion going well. Miriam's off. Falters a little at the start. Back into it now as Peggy hits the cargo net. Peggy climbing strongly. And look at that determination. Oh, two scoops is on his feet. Very excited. Miriam's on the rope. And Peggy crosses to the furthest zip for the wild ride to the arena floor. In the background, Miriam starts the hand ladder. And Peggy enters the hurdles that have been the graveyard for so many contenders. First the balance beam, then the travelator. Her fans urging her on. Fast on the boob. Oh, she stumbles on the travelator. Peggy mistimed the start of the travelator climb badly there. Composes herself for another crack. Yes, the stride perfect. Up to the top, through the paper burst, and into the semi finals of this international gladiators competition. Miriam leaps off the zip. A teacher, a wife, and a mum. And I must say that her English is superb. Certainly 100% better than my German. There's her husband, Jurgen, with baby Laura as she comes off the balance beam. It's certainly taking its toll on her, this grueling eliminator. The Travelator powers her way up. She's achieved what very few people in the world even get the opportunity to try. She's competed in international gladiators and beaten the eliminator. Swings home, Miriam lost from Germany. At the top of the show, you talked about the importance of getting the experience of participating in front of a big crowd. And you said how important these people here in Birmingham would be to you. What do you have to say to them right now? Thank you so much, everyone. You guys are great. And to the victor, a little token of your participation in the prelims. But you got bigger fish to fry. Good luck. Thank you. Well, Miriam, it was very difficult for you with a 17 and a half second deficit. Yes, it was. But these people have me at least that I could make it. Thank you. They certainly did. You've worked very hard this evening. This is for your, as a token of appreciation for you. It's been great to have you on the show and the very best of luck in the future. Let's hear it for Miriam. And we'll have the men's eliminator between Great Britain's Mark Everett and Russia's Alexander Maltsev after this timeout. The international gladiators are tough and getting tougher every year. I'm in my third season now of American Gladiators, and I think I'm about to retire. I'm getting old. Look at the hair. But there's a great international spirit developing. Um, in fact, Hawk stood up in the middle of the canteen the other day going, we are the world. <laughs> Only Hawk could do that, of course. The international gladiators goes without saying, all big, tough, strong guys, but they've got one quality that I admire. They've got a sense of humor. They're all very nice, they're all very competitive, and it's gonna be a fabulous international show. Well, I've met the international gladiators, and they're just the same as us, except they talk funny, and we're bigger. Well, Rhino's bigger. Come to think of it, he talks funny too. Are you sure he's English? 
While Hunter goes to find out, let's look at the scores. Mark's three-point lead converts to a one-and-a-half-second head start in this eliminator. Great Britain, you will go on my first whistle. Russia, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Mark from the UK starts his run, high and low beams. Here comes the Russian bear, Alexander. Mark's tackled this grueling course four times already in the domestic championships. He knows a few tricks. Onto the bike and gets pedaling. Alexander makes the rope look easy. Mark's fans know the Russian is still a huge threat. Mark finishing the handbike. And look at Mark go across the rollers and onto the net. And look at Alexander. He's crossing like a Cossack. The Russian eating into Mark's lead. The fans urging him on. Look at him climb that net. Mark's at the top. He'll race for the furthest zip. Alexander hauls himself up. Mark onto the zip. 90 feet. Splash down into that graveyard. A bird's eye view of the International Arena for Alexander there as Downey zips onto the mat. Frankie and her mum on their feet now. Mark of the United Kingdom onto the balance beam and up onto the travelator without breaking stride. Straight to the top and through the paper burst. He'll have the huge honour of carrying the Union flag for his country into the next round. It's celebrations all round. Here comes Alexander. Big, powerful strides up the travelator. He certainly made a lot of friends here tonight. The Russian completes the Eliminator. We must stop cuddling like this. You must be so delighted. I am, yes. That was um, a good Eliminator. I didn't mess up. It went really well. I mean, you just seem to be walking up that travelator. You've got it down to a fine tee. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, I can assure you of that. <laughs> so can you do it all over again? Yes, I'd love to. Oh, well, we'll see. We look forward to that. And that's for you. Let's hear it from Mark Everett of the UK. <laughs> Alexander, you could have won it. What happened up there? I had a bit of bad luck, but I like this game, and I like the spectators. I'm just glad that it was the champion of England that I lost to. If I'd practiced a bit more, I think I would have won. These people did like your performance. Say hello back to them, too. Uh, thank you. Alexander Maltzow. And we've got a little token of our esteem for you, baby. So the USA's Peggy Odita and Great Britain's Mark Everett are moving on to the semifinals. Ulrika, I know this is your first taste of international competition, your thoughts, your impressions. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed it, but what I've enjoyed most is the atmosphere we've created here in the National Indoor Arena. The British people have just clapped and gone behind everybody here, and it's made for a terrific, exciting show. Indeed, almost an Olympic feel here. Kimberly, your impressions. I certainly have enjoyed myself. What can I say? It's so fantastic to be so far away from home here in Birmingham. The crowd is amazing, and of course, the calibre of uh, Gladiator and Contender has been fantastic tonight, so I'm looking forward to the next one. Well, it's been quite a night here at the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham, England. For Ulrika Johnson and Kimberly Joseph, I'm Mike Adamley. We'll see you again next week on International Gladiators. See you there. See ya. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. <laughs> There'll be more atmospheres, duel and hang tough with the gladiators from around the world next here on Challenge. Whilst over on PIC, extreme measures and highly classified business in Border Security, USA.